Masterpiece of steel is the new 53 Chevy Era Power. The totally revolutionary 99 Star Booster engine guarantees a completely new driving experience. Come on a little tour of the Miller Motor Company and see how everything got started. This unique and stunning example of automobile design is the product of many creative visions. Its glamorous styling gives you a futuristic driving feel like you never had before. Our engineers have managed to put the technology of tomorrow into your car of today. The completely redesigned engine has proved its dependability in numerous endurance tests. We guarantee perfect road holding at any speed on any surface. Our brand new shock absorber system keeps you on the road, even in the most extreme conditions. This program is too short to tell you about all the new features of the 53 Chevy Era Power, but we can promise you this. The fantastic 53 Chevy Era Power will make you the king of the road. Hello and welcome to another exciting Let's Play starring me, L1011 Widebody, and today we face an auspicious milestone in the history of Let's Play starring me, L1011 Widebody. Today is the first game that I will be Let's Playing with my new 46 inch Samsung widescreen LCD TV, and inexplicably, the game I've decided to bestow that honor upon is a big pile of crap called Car Tycoon from Fish Tank Interactive and Vectorcom Development. Uh, Car Tycoon is a game that came out in 2003 on fresh on the heels of uh, many other similar tycoon games, uh, business management games that came out in the wake of uh, Chris Sawyer's Roller Coaster Tycoon that came out, I believe, in 1999. And it comes in the uh, vein of other uh, card, uh, other tycoon games like uh, Casino Tycoon and Oil Tycoon and Airline Tycoon and basically any kind of business management uh, simulator game got the uh, tycoon. Uh, name slap to it uh, to uh, cash in on the success of uh, Chris Sawyer's game which uh, he actually got the tycoon from uh, Transport Tycoon come out in 1994 to uh, somewhat uh, less fanfare than the more well-known game so basically Car Tycoon uh, the object of the game is to uh, create and run a car company designing and building cars and selling cars. And uh, it's similar in uh, 
concept to a game that came out in the old uh, VGA DOS days called Detroit, which was another type of uh, car simulator game. Uh, car business management sim, I should say. But uh, the only thing they really share in common is a obtuse business management uh, uh, simulation and uh, a dry presentation. So, as you can tell, I'm uh, not particularly excited about this game. I was interested in it when it came out because uh, it's, it's a genre that I think uh, could work well. Uh, but uh, just hasn't really gotten that uh, one publisher to kind of get it. You know what? Uh, what uh, makes the uh, industry interesting? Interesting. So let's go ahead and start in. You have our exciting options: new game, load game, quit game. So right away, you're presented with a series of scenarios. Uh, taking place in various years. You'll notice it only goes up to number nine and the rest are grayed out because this one is broken and I can't complete it. So everything after that is locked out because you're supposed to unlock them in order and this one is broken. So right away we're kind of starting off uh, promising. So we're just going to do an open-ended game from 1952 on in the cities of Montgomery and Barrow, so we'll go ahead and hit start. So gameplay takes place in a real-time environment, unlike the turn-based type in Detroit, or what you would be expecting, so it's kind of unusual that it would take place in kind of this real-time thing. Oh, we almost locked up there. So, uh, unusually, instead of actually building factories you actually have to tell the city hall that you want to participate in auctions for them and they actually auction off abandoned factories that just happen to be lying around and nobody is using so um, in that sense it's kind of is like the actual Detroit where it's full of abandoned buildings that uh, the difference being that people actually want to buy them hey -o. so First you have to indicate your, your your willingness to participate and what that will trigger is at various times see it's January 1952 so as we go on through the months will uh, auctions will be triggered and we'll get to bid in those so one month has already gone by and time continues to go on through the auctions so that's kind of an unusual experience. We're playing as a blue team so every team has their own cars color-coded so as you can see these gray, white, black kind of grayscale uh, cars are the kind of the default uh, neutral cars so we're gonna be replacing them with cars of our own color. So this is how you design new cars, and it's surprisingly limited in its in its uh, presentation. Basically, all you can do is you can select from different types of car bodies. I'll get into that a little bit later. So we have a small car, which is the Lupino, and this van thing. So those are our only choices, and there's some various uh, statistics down here that don't particularly mean anything. And then you select an engine, so, whoop, ignore that uh, error message that I guess you can't see, but uh, sometimes error messages will show up in German, and while I'm thinking about it, let's turn on all the videos so you can see the um, hilarious um, video boxes down in the corner there with our wooden assistant who I will name Helga, for obvious reasons. So when you select different components, basically all you need to pay attention is to this box here, which is suitability for that model. All these other things don't really matter, um, unfortunately. So you have weight, performance, which doesn't really do anything, gas mileage, which is 6.8 liters. I don't understand what that means, if that's liters per the mile. Oh, and here's one of our... Uh, auctions. 
So these just pop up randomly right in the middle of the game while you're trying to do something. And your options are to raise bid by a thousand dollars, ten thousand, or a hundred thousand dollars, or to break off entirely. So hopefully we're gonna win this one. Hooray, we won. And that's how you acquire more factories. So I'll talk about that in a little second. So you can see that these models don't have high suitability. So it's all just about picking the components. Here's the interior with some different options. And the chassis, which is the wheels and suspension and stuff. And you pick the ones that are most suitable for that model. And then you whoop, jack up the price a bit. It seems to hang up a little bit there. Just like a real car company. And you start production and tell it to distribute to your various dealerships. So since we got a new factory, now we have to hire some factory workers to work in it and some engineers to do research, which we'll do in a second. But first, since we're low on money, we need to take out a loan. We'll just go with this one since it's 4% credit. So loans are important because you need to have cash on hand to win all those auctions and basically the only way to really get ahead is to uh, get a lot of loans and have a lot of money on hand and just outbid the computer in every auction. So here's our factory. It's one of those new modern open air factories and you can see our cars are being built and through stages so it starts off as just a body and then they put the interior in and then they drive away and when they have these little flag icons on top of them that means their car is out for delivery so they drive all the way on their own down to the dealership so we'll follow them here they come and here's our dealership so if you own and operate all the dealerships instead of franchising them out to different people we're gonna go ahead and offer a discount on those because people seem to like discounts on things even when they're already jacked up past the sticker price because nobody pays sticker price and there's different promotions you can do that have some kind of effect probably so we'll start that and now there's animating people dancing and you could zoom in if you like to look at uh, if you like your look of uh, pixely things let's not though so here's like an abandoned building these are kind of littered all throughout the the game map of you can't actually go and buy them. You have to wait for the cities to uh, give them to you. Put them up for auction. It's various houses. You can click on them and get more meaningless stats. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to do anything. So let's talk about uh, researching. So you're limited to these seven types of car bodies. You have compact, midsize, luxury cars, trucks, convertibles, sports cars, and vans. So you don't really have any options beside that. No garages for auction, so I guess I'll bid on that. Even though I don't know what garages really do, but I guess they're nice to have. That one was pretty cheap. So, garages uh, give you these repair susceptibility statistics. I guess 17% of our small cars need repairs at some point. And you can offer various services, which I guess help the cars sell or something. So, the whole range of uh, family type cars is taken up in compact and midsize. So, you, you don't get to offer. Uh, entry level size like uh, a Malibu or a Fusion or full size cars like uh, the Impala or the Charger or something like that or 
any kind of small cars. There's no options for hatchbacks or different body styles. Uh, there's only one type of luxury car, which is a large car. Which I guess would be like your town car or something. So you don't even get to offer like uh, luxury sports cars like uh, the BMW 5 Series or something like that. There's only one kind of truck. No full size or compact trucks or industrial trucks like uh, Volvo builds or convertible is its own body style. Oh, sometimes it uh, sticks up a little bit like that. So I guess it's kind of a sportsy sort of thing, but you don't get to offer convertible as an option. And then there's only one kind of sports car. So you don't get to have uh, sports uh, hatchbacks. It's a medium dealership up for sale, but I don't want one. There's three kinds of dealerships, uh, small, medium, and large. The small has two, two slots. This one has four. You can't click on them because we're not offering anything in them, but large dealerships have four, mediums have three. There's only, you're only really good at uh, spending your money on large or medium in some maps when there's aren't enough large dealerships. So, and then you have these sports cars, so you don't get to offer high-end sports cars or anything like that. And then one type of van. So, it's really uh, limited. You don't get to pick uh, styles. Um, even, it does, you don't even get to pick uh, the body type. Or, uh, I guess these are all made out of steel. I'm the only bidder on this factory. I guess I win. Hooray. So you list the production cost and quality, which goes up throughout the years, but doesn't, uh, it just seems to make the cars sell better or faster, I guess. And the material, which is actually the paint job, so you can see this one is a single color and this one is some uh, highlighting or shading on it. Before I forget, whoops, not that one. We need to hire new factory workers because otherwise it'll have less workers for each factory and that's not what we want because it'll make all the cars build slower. So this is, uh, apparently the Stratoliner 2 has no quality. So finish galvanize. You don't really get a lot of options. So let's go ahead and start researching some new car bodies so we'll have them available to build. And before I forget, we need to take out another loan. It's always a good idea to have at least a million dollars of cash on hand. Just in case there's a factory. The factories are the only one that go up for auction for more than a million dollars. So, and then you've got different kinds of interiors, which is basically the same thing. It just lists, this is how much it's going to cost to R&D, and this is some kind of nebulous quality thing, and the options are basic. Ah, it doesn't really mean anything, so you don't get to offer different options like a sunroof, or uh, cup holders, or automatic or manual transmission, CD player, radio. Here's our annual statistics. Looks like we lost some money or something. We sold 72 cars. It's another garage for sale. I guess I'll bid on that one too. So each city has their own uh, garage settings. So since the other garage I own is in a different city. I guess. And at the start of every year, see, we started a new year, so now new options are available. So it looks like there's a new uh, convertible interior. This one is has higher quality, and the options are country, which means something. Material is plastic, so you don't get to choose the material or anything, like, 
I guess leather or stuff. So we've already got a van body, so let's research some stuff for that and something for our sports cars and for our midsize cars. Different kinds of engines. Here's another garage. I guess I'll bid on that one too. So even in uh, engines, what you'd think would be kind of the more interesting options to play with since the engine is the heart of an automobile, you don't even get that kind of stuff. You just get these meaningless. Here's the displacement to 1600 cc's. I guess four is the number of cylinders since this one has six. Eight for the big block and I guess it's carbureted as opposed to fuel injecting and kind of a horsepower. One out of seven, I don't know what that means. And Gas mileage, I guess that's how much gas it uses per mile or something since the larger ones have higher numbers. But that's kind of the problem is that all these numbers don't really it doesn't really give you a good feel for what any of them mean. So, I guess we'll just kind of pick the best looking ones. I guess I need another loan, don't I? It's the only real problem is running out of money. 14 million for 5% or 12 million for 5%. I guess 14. Cha-ching! if you run out of money the game is over. Oops. Oh well. And then different kinds of chassis. Ground clearance is 17 centimeters. Yeah, although the tire size is listed in inches. 195 inches. An honorary citizen. Hooray! Small dealership. Do not want so, uh, tire size, 195 inches. That's uh, pretty big uh, tires. But why is it in inches and the ground clearance is in seven centimeters? Um, I guess it would make more sense if the if this is the wheelbase, because 195 inches is what uh, 15 feet. I don't know. Like I said, it doesn't uh, really seem to mean anything, but um, basically the newer it is, uh, more or less, is the more suitable it is for different models. And sometimes components from different types of uh, car classes will be more or less suitable. So let's pick one of our new factories. Let's see if we've got enough to build a new type of car. Let's see if we can build a mid-sized car, but see, we don't really have an engine that's suitable yet, and it says it's still under research. It takes a certain number of months. So, I guess we'll wait a little bit since we don't have any engines or chassis and keep looking around the game world. Here's one of the advertising agencies. You can take out advertising um, range varies for different ones. This one has billboards and print. Larger ad agencies have t radio and TV ads. So I guess print uh, newspaper ads have better range, which is just like coverage, I suppose, and they cost more. But there really isn't any any benefit towards uh, taking them because it doesn't. As you can see, we've been uh, selling our cars pretty well. Let's take a look at our dealership and see how well. So we've sold 126, 127 cars so far. 128. I guess that's of this particular model, which is the Lupino V1. And this is how many we've sold from this slot, I suppose. So we've sold 91 from this slot and 38 from this slot. How many we sold last month? 
I guess our promotion ran out. Maybe we'll start a new promotion. How about Magic Mike? He can do magic things! Okay. So, let's see. Anything has been researched? It looks like we've got some new stuff. So let's pick our mid-sized car body. Oh, new stuff was researched. And we can have... Let's see, the Vulcan is 62%. Damn it, Jim! And so you can see here's our uh, small size car because it's a lot less and our mid-size component is more and they both have the same suitability so when that happens I usually just go with the cheaper one because it makes it cheaper and people like cheaper things here's another instance here's one where the uh, small car one which is this one is actually more suitable than the mid-size one so I guess we'll use that one whoops I have to pick them all over again. Home line. Ah! Stop it! Every time a new month happens, it resets. So, there we go. There's a new car. Increase the MSRPA to about uh, 2.5 times the production cost. That's what I found to be kind of a basic... Oh, I guess we already made one. Now well, let's delete that one, because this is the one that has the better price. And start it for production to our dealership. So now that we've got a new slot being used, we need to set the surcharge or the discount so we'll set it to thereabouts and now our new mid-size car is out for sale how exciting there it goes and let's use our third factory see there's another garage for sale give to me your garages Yoink. I guess we'll try see if we have enough stuff for a full or a luxury car so this one is fairly suitable so that's good that'll make it sell pretty well there you go 64 percent and increase the price some more you have forty thousand dollars So, so you can see it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't even let you rename it. Should you type, start typing, nothing happens. So another one of the broken features in this game. Off you go for sale. Medium dealership. Don't need it. Set the discount for that. And then we'll start selling those. Here come our new mid-size cars. Take a look at our credit. Now we paid off one of our loans, that's good. Looks like we're still overall in good shape. As far as credit. So every time you get a sale, you see the money comes out. Or shows up. Just like that. When you sell a new car to a customer, you can click on it to see the uh, driver information. So this one is driven by a female of 22 to 30 years old. And guess what? Here's another small car. It's driven by the same type of person. Because only one type of person buys a type of car. Oh no, I don't have enough money for a factory. I guess I'm not doing so well in money, but that's okay. So, we clicked on the midsize. It's driven by a female 50 to 70 years old. And all midsize cars are driven by the same type of woman. I guess we need another loan. That should be sufficient, since we don't really need to spend anything right now. 
there's a gas station you can click on it to see the gas mileage of different cars although I don't th think that really makes sense since the luxury cars apparently get more gas mileage or use more gas I guess you get all these kinds of meaningless stats which are unfortunately don't mean anything here's another ad agency and here's another one of the things that's broken big customers the idea being that you can sell large number of cars to like rental car agencies or cab companies but it's broken and doesn't work surprise surprise also there are subcontractors you can buy an interior immediately and have it immediately available if you really really need one but they only have funds from model years in the past so it's usually better to research <sighs> what else is there to look at here's another big customer luxury sedans I have a luxury sedan but I'll make an offer but it doesn't work because they'll never accept it I suppose there's no way seeking 69 luxury sedans by June at twenty four thousand dollars each I would lose a lot of money oh well it's not gonna accept it so it's not gonna work here's a freeway the cars drive faster on the freeway and here's some uh, billboards so actually the only one of the few neat things is that if you take out an ad on billboards they'll actually start showing up around town when you're looking at them here's a cemetery that's where dead people live oh and this school is part of the cemetery for some reason that'll get the kids to class here's another factory for sale I would like it even though I don't have any dealership slots to use with it eventually I will have for some and I will use it oh and here's the map of like the town so this is where the factory is this little crosshairs see factory in Montgomery so this city up here is like Montgomery and this one is Barrow and that's where the different things are for sale and the different city halls you have to deal with and in a better game you would try to have factories that deliver only to dealerships in the same city to decrease your logistics lines but in this game it never really matters here's some charts Let's look at last year's liquid funds <laughs> Hey, a large dealership. I want that. So now we have more dealership slots. So we can uh, deliver our cars to more dealerships. Send you here. Here's a vacant factory. So now we can offer a new model since we have uh, space for it so let's offer a convertible let's pick the shadow which I guess has 12 cylinders that's pretty big Sunstar interior and increase the price because people are suckers start delivering now and I want to keep this window open because we're delivering two small car two uh, filling two bays of small cars at our one dealership so I want to reduce that oh hey look I have the same bill thing open oh yeah charts looks like we need more money
8,000 million dollars. Eventually, we'll pay off all our loans, but not for a while. There's a joke I could make in there, but I'm not going to. Where is our factory making small cars? Oh, here it is. Another garage. Gimme! Mine! Go away, green, red, and yellow. You are like a stoplight. So we're going to tell it to stop distributing to this bay and start distributing to this one instead. As you can see, it's selling it off right now. Because we don't need... We're offering four. Four out of seven, that's like more than 50%. So once we clear out this bay, then we can offer our convertible here and have four different types of cars at each one. See? Look at that. Isn't that nice? And I think I have one... the luxury car dealership. So we'll offer that one in Barrow 2. And now we are using up all our slots. Which is good. Because as soon as the slots fill up, you can only have 10 cars in stock at a different... Uh, at a dealership slot at once or it won't have any more. Here's the junkyard. If you click on it, it makes noise. It should make something pop up, but it doesn't because it's broken. This is our capacity used, which goes up, I guess. More cars sold is better. Little sales, goodwill, I don't know what that means. Here's another big customer. They want mid-sized cars at $15,000. I suppose I can do that. Maybe something will happen. So here's a taxi cab company and a car rental company. Oh, and an apartment building that's been exploded. How oh, charming. And a diner, which has high income. It must be a Denny's. Or an IHOP. Here's some water. So, the, gra the graphics, as far as the uh, game map goes, uh, Similar to um, what we saw in Mech Commander, where it's based off of different kind of sprites. There's another large dealership. I want it. Give me. It's a series of uh, sprites on a sort of 3D map. But uh, we're in Mech Commander, it was used to. Uh, the fullest of its somewhat limited extent where you could have mechs with different uh, body parts missing and different running and walking animations and here it's just limited to uh, showing different car bodies and in four different colors well five if you include the grayscale so, it's not particularly interesting, it doesn't give you the variety to uh, show off different kinds of colors or anything. Not very distinguishing, and all cars kind of look alike. Here's a garage. I want that to... Gimme. Stop outbidding me. Do you think this is some sort of auction? So, now that we've got another dealership, let's offer more cars in it. I found just through experimentation that the optimal number of 
slots for a factory to be at full production building is three to four, so we're getting close to that. That usually keeps it uh, building at a steady rate and not backlogging too much. I've got all that set up. Set the various discounts. That means stuff. How are we doing money-wise? We're only five million dollars still in debt, so we're getting closer. It costs money to make money. Ching. Let's see, can we offer any new types of vehicles? I guess we can start... We can at least design a vehicle to have it ready for production, so let's design a van. So the next time we have an available dealership or factory slot, we can start building a van to go into it. And here's one of the fun bugs in Car Tycoon, is that it's actually possible to sell so many cars that the game starts to have traffic jams. And cars get backed up. And then you have long lines of them going all the way back to here. Because we've sold too many cars, and there's not enough roads to handle them all. How unfortunate. What else can we do? We can go to the city hall and see how many vehicles we have. Apparently we have 232 of our cars in circulation, and it breaks it down by type and the number of growth and the average price. So that's in Montgomery. Let's go look in Barrow, which is where our dealerships are. Oh, it's less for some reason. I don't care. Let's see, you can look at the stock market. And here's what I was talking about earlier. You can't actually buy stocks in other companies, so there's no real way to take over another company like the one scenario wants us to, so we can't win it. And here's all kinds of meaningless things. I guess this is the number of stocks available and how much each one costs, so I guess this is the bank that I'm taking all the money out of because their stock is worth $12,000 a share. Whoop. There's espionage you can do. Sort of. But this is broken too. Espionage in progress. Um, I don't know what happens. Let's leave that window open and see if something happens. Oh, that was fast. Oh, I guess that does work. So the yellow team has 4.5 million dollars, zero dollars of debts, one factory, and last month they made three and a half million dollars somehow. But I guess as... Oh. I guess as soon as you click on it, it goes away, and then you have to do it a different time for each one, so that's kind of a waste of time. And I guess you could steal a components. I don't know. You did different types of faces. This one has a higher success chance. Well, let's try that. Let's try stealing. Sales figures for our small cars. I'm not very good. An engine. Well, I'm sorry. 
Also, you can do sabotage. Um, I guess it's done. Did we steal an engine? Let's find out. Maybe it was this one. No, that's R&D. Let's try looking in available thingies. Do you see one that's different? I don't know, and I don't care. We could try sabotaging. Let's... Hey, a large dealership. I want one! Yay. Every time you bid on a new thing, your sales staff goes down if it's a dealership and your factory worker's percentage goes down. It splits it out around your already existing properties so you have to manually hire more workers or the sales will stop happening, which is bad. Um, I guess we'll... Let's have our luxury car is sold here. So we'll at least have something to be for sale. Let's not offer too much of a discount though. Sabotage auction. Initiate rumors. I don't know what that does. Shut down production. That sounds good. Oh, it costs more based on the amount of success. Sabotage in progress. We'll see if that works. But I bet it doesn't. Because like many things in this game, I'm sure it's probably broken. And we don't know whether it worked or not. How about that? Ah, uh, so I think I'm uh, running out of things to show you in this game. We've almost got our loan paid off. We're only two million dollars in debt now. Uh, we've got a couple of dealerships and some factories. This one is not doing anything. Oh, I guess we should start building that van, like I thought. Now that we have... Oh, what? Why is this producing... I don't understand. I don't think that's right. This one says it's producing... Oh. Hmm. Sometimes you can get confused. I guess this one is producing... luxury cars. But then this one is producing... not... I don't understand. The little gear means nothing. Oh, this is medium-sized cars. That would be why. I am getting confused. This one is apparently not building anything. Or maybe it stopped building stuff. It looks like all our factories stopped constructing. For some reason. Maybe they went on strike. Maybe they want more wages. I will try to fix that. I guess this is the factory because it's not popping up a new window. See? Hey, they're building again. I thought I had a factory not doing anything. This one is building medium cars, so we should tell it to distribute. Or it's distributing medium cars, so we'll tell it to build medium cars. I want a garage. So yeah, the presentation is pretty confusing if you can't tell already by how confused I am in my own Let's Play video. 
This one is building luxury cars. It is distributing luxury cars, so that's all in order. This one is building small cars and distributing small cars. This one is building convertibles and distributing convertibles. I guess I didn't have an extra factory available. Okay, whatever. That's fine. As long as we're doing something. Let's we'll take out another loan. We're almost done paying it off. Now we're in negative numbers. That's not good. And what else is there? So you can click on this to look at the various ad agencies. TV ads, 92%. I guess I'll take one out just for the fun of it. But you have no real way to know if it's working or not. I guess you can kind of tell by listening to the sounds of cash registers. Looks like our cars are selling pretty well since they're not in stock at any of our dealerships. That one's already selected. So there's no real way to tell why there's so few cars in stock. It can mean that they're just selling really, really well, or it can mean that they're all... we're having production shortages, which might be the case since look at how many of our uh, luxury cars are backed up here. There's just no easy way to tell. Okay, what else is there? Um... I guess that's really it. I could wait around to show you the uh, other types of uh, cars, but I'm sure you're not really that interested. Because we're just doing an open-ended game, there's really no way to win. Because it'll just keep uh, playing on and on. So, unfortunately, uh, that's pretty much it to the game. So, there was a lot more potential to it. Um, what would I have liked to see? Well, aside from more interaction in the design and research of cars, like you can't, even in uh, Detroit, you could at least sort of design car bodies, but there's only really one way to go towards higher suitability. There's uh, no real interaction in it. There's no feedback. You can't uh, research uh, uh, consumer trends to find out if people want uh, cars that are larger or smaller or whatever, more uh, more leg room. And you can't uh, forecast market trends, like if uh, gasoline prices are forecast to go up, you can't uh, try and research smaller cars. Um, there's no uh, reputation. You don't earn a reputation for having uh, garbage cars or high reliability or anything. Or if there is, there's no real way to... Uh, to see that, which is unfortunate. Um, you can't do like corporate sponsorships of things. Like, uh, uh, General Motors used to uh, sponsor the um, arena that the Vancouver Canucks played in, and Ford sponsors Ford Field where the Detroit Lions play. There's no kind of corporate sponsorships. There's another broken junkyard. Um, you can't offer cars to uh, racing things or anything like uh, Ferrari has their racing uh, uh, their Formula One team and um, who else? Toyota has off-road racing and uh, Ford has like in NASCAR and also some off-road racing. There's nothing uh, 
There isn't really any of the kind of uh, fluff that uh, makes you feel like you're actually a car company. It's just a really dry uh, presentation where you just uh, design and uh, sell cars and you don't see what kind of uh, feedback you really get from it. So, I'm about to buy another factory. And, uh, also gameplay is limited to just this small area, so you don't get to, uh, offer cars throughout the world or anything, and dealing with different, uh, different markets, uh, wanting different things. And, well, the thing came up in the middle of my bidding, so I don't know if I want it or not. And I guess this means the game is over because now I can't click on anything. And it's broken again, so. I hope you at least enjoyed me talking about this game and why it isn't very fun or exciting and why I'm disappointed. So, until next time, I guess I will see you around. Oh! One good thing, uh, the music's pretty good. Bye. Boss, our affair is in the newspapers.